So hello and welcome to another video from sickmaths.co.uk where you can find lots of free maths videos both for A level and GCSE and uh, this one particular for the mechanics one module the trigonometry little tricks you need to know uh, for the M1 edX cell module so let's get going what do we need to know first of all? How to work out vertical and horizontal components of forces or velocity or even acceleration, etc. etc. Okay, and it's very simple. If you look at a right angle triangle like this and you consider F to be your hypotenuse and you've got your angle theta, our favorite little letter that we like to use for angles, don't be confused by it. Uh, how do we work out what the vertical component is? first of all. Well, using standard trigonometry, if you've got x and you've got f, i.e. the opposite and the hypotenuse, basically we've got sine theta going on. So x over f equals sine theta, and if we rearrange that, x will equal f times sine theta. So that is equal to f times sine theta, which we've written here. In a similar way, if you want to work out what y is, we've got y, uh, we've got the adjacent to the angle and the hypotenuse, so we've got cos theta. So cos theta equals y over f, rearranged gives you f cos theta equals uh, y. So basically, y is equal to f cos theta. So now we've got this triangle which basically tells you if you're going through the angle from your force through to the adjacent side you've got f cos theta and if you're taking your f side f uh, the side that represents the force f okay and get, taking it to this side over here which is the opposite side that is basically like going away from this angle which is called f sine theta so through the angle down here is f cos theta and away from the angle is f sine theta or whatever this happens to be this could be t for example it would be t cos theta and t sine theta uh, what else do we need to explain to you we've got often uh, we've got forces going perpendicular to the plane and along the plane and in particular you really need to know about what happens to your weight force mg mass times uh, acceleration due to gravity which is 9.8 bit too much information there probably. So the weight force is always going straight down. How much of the force is going perpendicular to the plane and how much is going down the plane? So if you have your angle theta here and then draw a right angle triangle and then draw another right angle triangle here okay what you get is well this angle is 90 degrees uh, because we're making a line going perpendicular to the plane uh, or the slope I should say and if that is 90 degrees together and this is say 50 degrees then that would be 40 degrees which would make this 50 degrees as well so basically what I'm trying to say is this is also equal to theta and now since this is mg and you've got your right angle triangle here the force going through the angle is going to be mg cos theta like we explained here going through the angle means cos theta and the force going away from the angle which is this one here is mg sine theta because as we said here going away from the angle gives you sine theta so basically the weight component of the force it going perpendicular to the plane is always cos theta mg the weight times cos theta and going down the slope is always sine theta so you have to remember that because that comes up so often especially in the connected particles videos or th that I'm going to be making or the equilibrium forces anything to do with these slopes that's where you're going to get another useful bit of information uh, which is not specific just to the mechanics videos it's also you'll find it in uh, C1 and C2 is these are these two special triangles now I'm going to show you how to get these triangles and what they tell you these triangles basically tell you how to work out angles to do with 60, 30 uh, and 45 when you're using trigonometry so let's get these triangles drawn if you have an equilateral triangle which is 2 by 2 by 2 okay and then you cut it in half you get this triangle which is 2 by 1 
but to work out this side you just do a bit of Pythagoras, so you say uh, 2 squared which is 4, take away 1 squared which is 1 gives you 3, so square root 3 is the length of this side. And then you can say uh, because angles in an equilateral triangle are all 60, 60, 60, and that would have been 60, but it's cut in half to make 30, so you've got 30, 60, and obviously 90 degrees because you get a right angle triangle when you cut the uh, equilateral triangle in half. Okay, uh, basically cos 60 is, is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse which is half, so cos 60 equals half, and what else do we know, uh, s sine 60 is the uh, opposite over hypotenuse which is root 3 over 2, so sine 60 we're over in that, sine 60 is root 3 over 2, cos 60 equals half, uh, let's go with the 30 degrees now, cos 30 is root 3 over 2 because it's adjacent over hypotenuse and sine 60 is 1 over 2 because it's opposite over hypotenuse so those are all listed there and if you want to get this triangle it's very simple if you draw a triangle like this which has got a 45 degree angle you know because it's halfway between 90 and 0 that when you the, the every step you go across will be the same as the step you go upwards because it's hard exactly between going upwards and going sideways so it's going equal amounts of sideways and upwards so basically you get this nice isosceles triangle where this is 1 and this is 1 therefore both of these angles are 45 and so basically sine 45 is 1 over root 2 and cos 45 is also 1 over root 2 and tan 45 which I didn't bother writing down you notice I don't bother with tan because that you don't really get components using tan you only get components of forces using sine or cos so anyway tan for example is 1 because 1 over 1 is tan 45. Anyways, that's irrelevant. And that's the end.